This show is part of the RetroZap.com podcast network. Because if you don't press record, nothing gets heard. Really? Is that how that works? That's production 101. This is what you can look forward to on episode 178, part 2 of our D23 Expo coverage of Skywalking Through Neverland. Would have kicked you in the shins and called you a liar. Literally, Disney princesses Disney bounding themselves. Whoa, whoa, whoa. You're you're skipping over Howard the Duck. Undoubtedly, one of Earth's greatest minds here. P.S. Glad you found your Apple Watch. (laughs) I'm like, well, that's why I stood in line for this panel all night. Why didn't they live stream this? Basically to make sure a guy like me doesn't try to run up and grab Mandy Moore or something. (laughs) And I had the Amidala mask on. And I was like, ooh, it's my song. Yeah, whenever he stopped, if you started talking to him, he would actually fire off his cannon. Ladies and gentlemen, boys and girls. Hello, Skywalkers. Baby, you listen, listen. I only hope that we never lose sight of one thing, that it was all started by a mouse. You are skywalking through Neverland. Hey, hey, Skywalkers. Are you ready to talk Star Wars, Disney, and a Star Wars land concept that goes back to 2010? Well, if your answer is an overwhelming yes, then we want to welcome you to Skywalking Skywalking Through Through Neverland. Neverland. This is your fun-filled, positive Star Wars and Disney podcast that takes you through a tour through the many decades of fandom. I am Richard Woloski, and now everyone, please say hello to my sweetie wife, Sarah, who doesn't have moves like Jagger, but she's got the moves like a Naboo queen. (laughs) (laughs) Uh, A Naboo queen who got all excited when Darth Vader started dancing with her. We went to a wedding last night. They played the cantina theme. And we happened to be right outside the doors, uh putting on costumes, you know, for the, for the photo, photo booth. booth. And I had the Amidala mask on. And I was like, ooh, it's my song. So I ran in there All with my... All of a sudden you hear... Doo, 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 yeah. Doo, 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 doo. <laughs> so I ran in there with my Amidala mask. And there was a Darth Vader mask sitting there. So I had to put Darth Vader on. And we ran out to the dance floor and danced the night away to the Cantina theme song. Mm-hmm. It was <laughs> our song. Yes, yes. It was so cute. Yeah, and then afterwards, everyone stood up and applauded. Mm-hmm. <laughs> there was a little girl who was like convinced that I was a princess and wouldn't stop uh, like coming up to me and trying to dance with me. And it was very cute. Well, you had your hair very Elsa like. Uh, yeah, I guess I didn't realize it. And then I was wearing a blue dress and it yeah, it was very cute. So I was wearing the blue dress with like the sweetheart bodice, but then like lace above. So it kind of looked like Elsa dress. And then my hair was Elsa E. And I, I didn't even mean to do that. But this little girl was like. Kept on coming up to me like, oh, and her mom was like, she thinks you're a princess. <laughs> and this was a wedding for our friend Jess, mm-hmm. who was into huge into movies. Yeah. So, of course, she had to play Let It Go. Let it go, let it go. So Sarah ran out to the dance floor and danced for the whole gaggle of little girls yes. to Let It Go. Yes, it was the cutest thing. Yes, very, Aww. very cute. <laughs> All right, now, moving on with the show. Yes. I want to say hello to our Star Wars and Disney family. We like to start each and every show with a giant Wookiee hug (laughs) to our family of Skywalkers. And you guys are watching right now live on Facebook and on YouTube. And also, I want to say a big shout out to people who are listening later on their podcatchers because we love each and every one of you. And we love it when you share that you're listening to the show. We are at Skywalking Pod on Twitter. And right now, joining us on as our face huggers, we have Rebecca Whitebrock, mm-hmm. Lori Lazat, Justin Smith, Matt Clifton, Donald Wicks, Martin Keeler is over here on YouTube, and Chica Fent as well. Yeah, yay! Well, oh, wait, what are we calling? Oh, Sky Tubers. Yes, Martin yes. Keeler, you are a Sky Tuber. <laughs> <laughs> How often do you hear that a day, Martin? I'm mm-hmm. guessing. 50, 60 times a day. (laughs) All right. Now, we are recording this from Long Beach, California on Sunday, July 23rd, 2017. Welcome back, Minnie Mouse. Now, tell us what time it is. It's 12.58. Good afternoon. 
<laughs> no longer good night. Mm -mm. It's the afternoon right now. A much better time to record. Now, coming up on this big episode, we're going to talk with Star Wars artist Tom Hodges about his D23 Expo experience and his his Star Wars land concept that he illustrated for Celebration 5 back in 2010 and how that compares to the new Star Wars Galaxy's Edge. Yeah. This will be a lot of fun. We are excited. And you know what? We will also check in with our good friend and the author of Seen Unseen Disneyland and more Seen Unseen Disneyland, Russ Flores, about how he became the go-to guy for trending cosplayers at D23 Expo. And just as we were talking about the big, impressive, big thunder mountain costume, which I keep calling Matterhorn, for some reason I can't get the two differentiated... <laughs> But that cosplayer who wore the Big Thunder Mountain costume happened to be walking right by just as we were talking about her. It was like a movie moment. And her name is Tina Elliott, and she had just won first place in the Inspired by Disney category. At the costume contest? At the, co at the costume contest, yeah. At the masquerade contest at D23. And she walked by and she overheard us talking about her. So she joined in the conversation. <laughs> <laughs> and this was all Richard recording this at the D23 Expo. While you were recording this, Richard, I was actually watching the Alan Minken concert, which was happening, and I recorded that whole thing. So that whole concert is HD on our YouTube channel, Skywalking Through Neverland. So uh, it's exciting. We, we divided and conquered on that yeah. last day of yeah, D23 we did. Expo. Made some really good future contacts, too, during that that day of, of Sunday when you were off doing your concert thing, and I was recording and talking to people, mm -hmm. and you were talking to people at the Minkin concert. Oh, so, so much good stuff coming your way, Skywalkers. Yeah, all in this o episode. Overwhelming. Not just on this episode, but future episodes. Oh, that's true. Okay. Yeah. Well, yeah. Yay. So, so excited. Now, we also have some shout-outs. Rob Dellinger is on vacation this week, which means the Skywalker of the Week jingles are starting to pile up. <laughs> so, Rob, hurry up, get back, and get back to work. All right. Now, let's hear another fandom highlight moment from Star Wars author Cole Horton. I'm Cole Horton, author of Star Wars Absolutely Everything You Need to Know and Star Wars The Visual Encyclopedia. And for me, the thing that pushed fandom was the invention of really high-quality costumes, like the 501st, the Rebel Legion. I think that is so core to everything we do today. There can't be a big announcement without them showing up. There isn't a convention without those groups showing up. Uh, and that really took the level of fandom to a whole different place. All right. Thank you, Cole Horton. Now, before we roll into our big show... Ryan Johnson had said something interesting on Good Morning America while at D23 Expo that I wasn't expecting to hear about Phasma and what other pop culture character she relates to. Now, let's roll into this clip. I was not expecting this. People who dig Phasma are going to be happy with what they see in this one. I okay, hope. good. Because yeah. well, we clearly know she survived the trash compactor and... She did. That's, you know, yes, somehow she got out of that. Episodes. I know. Dangerous, smelly places. So, um, yeah, she got out of that. She's, I like to think she's like the Kenny from South Park of the Star Wars Can't series. <laughs> the Kenny? The Kenny of the Star Wars universe. Wow. You know Kenny. Oh, my God. They killed Kenny. You bastards. Instead, this would be. Oh, my God. They killed Phasma. You. Nerf herders. Uh, <laughs> hysterical hysterical stuff i think that's more hysterical to people who like south park and watch it sarah loves them just as much as beavis and butthead no, no, stop. <laughs> yeah. no, no i hate it no stop it <laughs> so this means that they're gonna keep on killing off phasma in every movie and bringing her back like nothing ever happened <laughs> i don't like it would you rather have the South Park reference or Beavis and Butthead? Oh my god! They I hate them both. Kenny. No, no! Stop it! No! You you can't sleep in the bedroom you, you, if you're gonna do that. You said no, 
No, you said, no, you said no. Phasma. Okay, now, now, now it's time. Let's roll into our discussion with Star Wars artist Tom Hodges about his Star Wars Land concept illustration that he did for Celebration Five back in 2010, and now how that compares to what we'll be getting in 2019. And then, because Tom Hodges was there, all the expo as well, we dive deep into our experiences at D23 Expo. You, you said expo. <laughs> we are now talking with Star Wars artist, Mr. Tom Hodges. Hey, hey, Tom. Hello, how you doing? We are doing great. We are at the wrap-up of Disney D23 Expo. So what has been your experiences here so far? Uh, sleeping on concrete floors... Thursday and Friday night, seeing two awesome panels, seeing what Star Wars Land looks like, finally. Uh, I'm sorry, what is it called? Okay, <laughs> it's Star Wars Galaxy's Edge right now. <laughs> but they did tell me there is a name, they just haven't released it yet. There's an official name of the planet, yeah. There okay. is. Right, yeah. Yeah, the planet does have a name. Okay. Yeah, because so, all yeah. along we were told the name of the land was going to be the name of the planet. Yes, and they haven't released that yet. So, and I, and it's something we don't know. We've never heard of before. Right. Like that. Now let's talk on that because you did this awesome painting a while ago of what, yeah. of what you thought a new Star Wars land would be like. Well, I see. Here's the thing: I hadn't, I'd never walked into a Disney theme park until I was like 27 years old. But once I did, I was, I was hooked. You know what I mean? And but before that, when I was a kid, I always thought it was a like. Wouldn't it be great if there was a Star Wars theme park, you know, with like a Death Star roller coaster ride and this and a Hoth ride and then, and you know, like, and you think of that when you're a little kid. So, you know, I at the in 2010 for Celebration Five, I was trying to come up with something unique to, to oh, actually, it was a year before. Um, it was, uh, I was trying to come up with something unique to do for my celebration print because we all do, you know, the approved artists do their celebration prints. And I'm like, I wonder if I could get away with this because I'm a big old Disney nerd, I'm a big old Star Wars nerd, I'm a Star Wars artist. What if I did this? And I did a really rough, actually, the rough layout I did is more in line with the original Ryman drawing, where it's kind of like a like a like a three quarter view from like a mountaintop yes. type of view. That was the original concept that I sent them. That it was it was based loosely off of the original Ryman drawing that him and Walt worked on. Right. Yeah. That was my original pitch. They bought it. They were like, yeah, do it. Go with it. Run with it. <laughs> and, Amazing. And so what I did was, and then I started like doing a little research and started looking around. I'm like, how can I make this a little bit more for the masses? You know, how can I make it a little bit more, you know, desirable? And then I started looking at the old Disney maps, which are the, still the same Disney maps that you can buy in the stores now, except they're always updated. And it did, when I say the stores, the stores in the parks. Where it is, it's it has it's got the the map of the, of the of the parks with all the lands, and it's got like character headshots all around it, and then it's got in the corner in the old one, the one that I actually based on had Walt on it with a little quote and a little blurb on the side, and um, so what I did was I made that Yoda, uh. <laughs> and I also did a, a, a RSO member, which uh, which is the Re Republic Service Organization, which I created for the Star Wars webcomic, for the Clone Wars webcomic, which is kind of like the USO for Star Wars. Mm -hmm. In the Star Wars universe at the time, uh, during the Clone Wars, mm -hmm. so <laughs> then I'm like, okay, well, the, basically what I'm going to do is I'm going to make this map that looks like a park map, and then I started having to break down all the lands and all the landmarks and everything, like because you need your fountain and you need you have you know you have to have your your, your castle, center, your, center your castle, which was uh, which was the Jedi Temple, right. um, my <laughs> Space Mountain was the Death Star Trench Run, mm -hmm. way in the back I had I had Tatooine, and let me tell you something, you look at, do you guys have the map? I'm sure we have it somewhere. Yeah. yeah if, if you have it, look at it or go online and look at it. Look at Tatooine. The Tatooine setup looks a lot like the one end of Star of the new Star Wars land. I'm oh. not even joking when I say that. And and which end? If as you're looking at it, if you look, okay, right. if the back corner of uh, which would be like uh, on which would be, I would say where Autoto Autopia is. Okay. On a, on a Disneyland map is where Tatooine is. Okay. And you have the, the Bunta Eve coaster in the back, too. Right. But where the marketplace is and the Falcon is and everything, the Docking Bay 94 and everything, it c resembles a little bit of what they're doing with with uh, Galaxy's Edge. Okay. So I'm kind of like, and here's the other thing. And I, trust me, I don't believe for a second that I was ripped off or anything like that. In fact, if I gave them 
any inspiration for this in any little teeny tiny way, I am incredibly flattered. I'm not saying they did, but there are, there's a few things in there that I'm like, hmm, I did that. You know what I mean? <laughs> even my, um, even, uh, I, for Celebration, uh, five and then for seven, when it was in Anaheim, Celebration Anaheim, yes. I did attraction posters. But yeah. I handed them out. They were free. Like, did, like 250 days, I did a different one each day that I handed out. Um, the first set was Death Star Trench Run, Jabba's Palace Grill, uh, <laughs> the, uh, the, the, uh, Escape from, uh, the Hoth, Escape from Echo Base, which is kind of like the Matterhorn. Yeah. Um, it was a combination of the Matterhorn <laughs> and, um, and Everest, Expedition, yes, Everest. Expedition Everest. And, um, then there was, what else was there? The Bunta Eve, uh, no, that's that I did in the second run. But anyway, I did attraction poster storm and but the attraction poster I did for Moss Eisley in uh f- for, cel- for celebration Anaheim resembles the marketplace for this. Wow. And I, like I said, I'm not saying they in any way, shape, or form that I had any influence. But I will tell you this: I was set up next to Disney and Imagineering in at Celebration Five, two years before Disney bought Lucasfilm. And I had Imagineers coming to my booth every day wanting to check out the map and asking me questions about it. That's all I'm putting out there. Okay. All right. And that's true. And that is 100%, 100% true. Now, just, just saying here, I know Disney put out some merchandise and mugs and shirts and cups and stuff with their attractions with a Star Wars spin on it. You mean with like the te- like where they had like the, like the, 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 the uh, space slug and the hat box? Oh, yeah, that's all. Trust me, if, mm. if if in any way, shape, or form, I had any influence on that decision, that's awesome. I I'm not I'm not that guy. I'm not that guy. who's like you ripped me off. No, not even a little bit. Like I saw it right. and I giggled. You know what I mean? Yeah. Just when you were when they and I, I mean I was in the live action panel when they announced Star when they announced they were making Star Wars Land, yes. and you asked the people I was with. I had I was bawling like a. Baby, I was so excited and so happy. I was cry like my like my friend Victoria's like because I was shaking, I was crying so hard. She's like, Are you okay? I'm like, I'm this is amazing. This is the greatest thing yeah. ever. Oh my god. Tears running down like like down my face. People we looked at me like I was nuts. Yes. People looked at me like I was nuts. Same, same. So yeah. <laughs> we, so like, it's kind of a big up. deal. It's we were grabbing deal. our hands together. We leaped up like, oh my god. Well, you amazing. know why they announced it that quickly, right? No. They got. They were going to get scooped by like the Hollywood Reporter or Variety oh. or something. So Iger, they, Iger would Iger doesn't go up and do that stuff. He oh, okay. they brought him up to announce that they 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 wanted to to uh, beat the scoop from from the leak. So they announced it early. I think that wins for the biggest surprise. Yeah. ever because that no was one the saw surprise. That, that was a huge surprise, yeah. especially for the live action panel because you would have thought that would have been in the parks, Absolutely. which it was originally supposed to be. Okay. So yeah. So yeah, was like three hours later. So yeah, they had to exactly. Had to they had to beat that. So. Okay. so what are you looking forward to in Galaxy's Edge? Oh my God, what aren't I looking forward to? What's cool is now you've seen the model. You went down and looked at the model and everything. Yeah. Now that's the Disneyland model. They're both going to be the same, but the Disneyland has one one difference: three three entrances. Oh. Critter Country, Frontierland, and uh, and Fantasyland. That's how. Like and that is the actual like that is the model for the, for Star Wars Land and I'm like it doesn't look when you're looking from the outside it doesn't look like you can put something this big in there and the, and the Imagineer he says you don't understand what you can't see from the parking structure is all the difference oh really oh yeah he's like he's like he, he's like he's like you will be astonished at what we are do with with what we are doing what does that mean what you can't see like what's what, beyond that what big we can't building? see what like like because we can only see so much. And it goes back right. further, and it goes oh. uh, back along this way. Like it goes all the way back around Critter Country. It's a fourteen-acre expansion around, like it's, behind Critter Country. It'd be Country? like it would be like walking from like front from like you know when you enter Frontierland from Fantasyland. Mm-hmm. It'd be like walking from there all the way down to Pooh. Okay, that's I mean that's the length of it on the right. other side of the water. That's right. a long. That's a giant piece of property. That's like that's literally that's. That's Adventureland and New Orleans Square. Yeah. All, I mean, it's, yeah. it's a whole area. That's and that's going to be one land. Yeah, that's insane. That's incredible. And I know the other night when we were talking, I said that I had, as an eleven-year-old, had mapped mm-hmm. out the same kind of uh, my own Star Wars land. And, yeah. And my big e-ticket ride was something equivalent to "It's a Small World." Well, we just went along with an, and an X-wing boat and animatronics <laughs> just kind of popped up. What was your e-ticket ride? Your biggest e-ticket ride? My e-ticket ride when I was a kid was the Death Star Trench Run. Mm-hmm. 
Yeah. Because in my head, because I loved, I loved that they did uh, Hyperspace Mountain. I did. I thought it was cool. However, I mean, you, you only saw what you could see because it was projected in front of you or it had a light or a flash yeah. or something. Like, it's a, I'm actually relieved it's, it's not in the park anymore. I mean, I liked it for what it was. And here's the thing. In all the times I went to the park, it, it, like while it was there, I only got on it three times total ever. Because I'm like, the wait was always so long. It, I mean, Space Mountain's wait is always long. But I mean, what they're going to do with, I mean, I, I actually talked to a friend, imagineer friend of mine. And I was like, I was like, I really can't wait to go to Pandora in January. He's like, it's, 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 he's like, it's, it's beyond what you'd expect he's like because like i've heard you know because you get to people what does avatar got to do with disney you know like that well what did star wars have to do with disney 30 years ago nothing it didn't have anything well, it to do with the same it. themes and same of feelings. course of course of course and 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 that's why and that's why you know you, i'm 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 very into the idea of avatar being brought in animal especially animal kingdom it's right. a perfect location for it but um he was like when you say it i want you to then imagine two years from now star wars land and how more advanced we're going to be with the animatronics and the and and the and and the ride, uh, the way the rides move and what you can do with the rides. I mean, the whole description of the Millennium Falcon ride. Yeah, I I like I'm stunned at how we're, how that's going to work out. Plus, you I mean you're going to be able to gain a reputation yes. in, in 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 on the planet. That's amazing. Come on, can you imagine walking in and as soon as you walk in, they know you're there and the first order is looking for you or bounty hunters are looking for you. Uh-huh. That. It that blows my mind, and that's the difference between Disney and say Universal. Had Disney done Harry Potter, I, and here's the thing: I like the Harry Potter mm-hmm. thing. I, it's it's Wizarding neat. World. I like Wizarding World, but I think had Disney had it, it would have been more encompassing. I think that, really? like you know, when you have yeah, but, well, here's think about it like this: Disney, when they do something like that, they like like you go to Epcot. Everyone who works in Epcot is from that country. Right. When you go in, into like just oh, the yeah. World Showcase. Had Disney done Harry Potter, the Wizarding World, it would have been, number one, they would have given it its, its own park in Florida. That would have been, it wouldn't have been a land. It would have been a park. That's number one. Number two, everyone who worked there probably would have been from the UK. Mm. And it would have been, and everyone would have been in character the whole time, which is what they're going to do at Star Wars Land. Right. I mean, you're going to go into the restaurant. And your server could be a Twi'lek or yeah, a droid awesome. or something like, you know, a droid could yeah. come and put your drink on the table. Mm-hmm. And then they got the hotel coming in Florida. Yes. That I, I can't even, I can't even wrap my head around yeah. it right now. Well, let me, uh, basically what I think all Disney wants to hear once Star Wars Land opens mm-hmm. is this blows Diagon Alley out of the water. Oh, yeah. I mean, that's and it what they will. want to hear. It will. And, and see, that's when everyone says, well, do, look at what Universal's doing with Harry Potter. Yeah. You know what? Here's the thing. That's all well and good. But. I'm sorry, but Star Wars is first, and I love and I like Harry Potter. Oh, yeah. But they're gonna. I mean, what what they are talking about doing with Star Wars Land, and the, like, and then the hotel. And I'm imagining the hotel in Florida will be attached to Star Wars Land. It's got to be. It's got to be attached yeah, to it. Yeah. They, how could they not do that? And that like the whole concept behind the hotel, like, I I I that place will be booked forever. It will never have a vacancy, and if it does, it'll be gone. Like. It, it, I can't even wrap my head around it. All right. All right. Now let's switch gears to the live action panel. Okay. Yeah. All right. So, so you, you had some amazing seats at the live action I have, panel. I had great seats at the animation and the live action panel. The animation had front row. Whoa. It was right in, like literally, like front row on the edge. And then for live action, same section, last row, right in front of Iger. <laughs> uh, on the same seat. So, I mean, I got to see everything right there. It was perfect. It was great. All right, so for the live action, what yeah. really stuck out to you? What made you, when you walked out, what well, made you skip? The Marvel, the, the, Avenge, the Infinity War stuff was what blew me away. Now, we wouldn't dare leave you without a morsel of Marvel. Please welcome the master of the Marvel Cinematic Universe, Kevin Feige. Thing we're doing next year that really is the culmination of these 10 years and it's called Avengers Infinity War <laughs> almost every single hero that we've ever introduced is going to be in that film people have been saying for 20 years that comic book movies are done 
<laughs> here we are. Marvel's 10th anniversary coming up, coming up next year. Marvel Studios. And we're losing our minds over what we saw in Infinity War. Mm-hmm. You know, that, which was what, to me, the big standout of the live action panel was Infinity War. Because, I mean, you were there. You saw it. I mean, it was incredible. I've never seen anything like that. I mean, literally nothing like that. I, 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 it, the way they've spent the last 10 years building to this. Mary Poppins, practically perfect in every way. Here's the other thing, and this is going to be, and you're going to look at me, you're both going to look at me funny when I'm say this. I've never seen Mary Poppins. <laughs> See? That look. That's the look. Mic drop. That's the look. But here's the thing. It's not from lack of interest. And here's the thing. I probably have seen it as a child and don't remember. Because I didn't, and because I had never seen The Sound of Music until I met my wife. But here's the thing about my wife. She's a diehard Mary Poppins fan. Like, like like hardcore like we have every version on blu-ray and dvd it was ever released deluxe sets and everything and i've never watched it but it's not for lack sarah, of interest come back. sarah <laughs> you'll watch it eventually it's not for lack of interest because i love dick van dyke i love julie andrews I like and i and you know it's disney the fact that i haven't seen it does surprise me too <laughs> but i will say that's mary poppins return stood out to me absolutely i thought it looked fantastic and but I think I'm I'm it's going to be easier for me to accept Mary Poppins Returns not being yes. the hardcore fan. I'm not going to judge it as harshly as I would if I was a hardcore fan. So I, that's that stood out to me. Um, I thought um, I think the the Lion King had me in tears. Yep. Oh yeah, I was. Cry when he sneezed. Oh my god! Oh, I know. Oh my, oh my god. god! Oh my god! This is a kitty. I can Richard can attest. I was like, kitty. Look at the kitty. Oh, I did. The, I did the same yes. exact thing. Like I'm like, he, I because they did the same thing with Jungle Book when we uh-huh. when they gave us the little preview yeah. too. They didn't show us really anything but like a little snippet of it, and we were hooked. Like we were we were like, we were we were really into it. And then when they showed us th- that reimagined. Reopening of the Lion King, yes. shot by with shot, shot by shot, replica of the everything. animated trailer, and with the, the, music. the music and every, and then and then they show Kitty, uh-huh. little Kitty, and he sneezed and I was like, oh my god, uh-huh. oh my god. Yeah, no, I, was <laughs> I, was, I think it was partly the lack of sleep and the over, you know, like uh, you know that yeah. too. Actually, what's funny is is I slept better the second night on the floor <laughs> in the convention center that I did the first night. I actually slept through what's funny is is that when we got in there they were playing Zootopia. Yeah. Then they played Beauty and the Beast because they played movies while we were waiting in line. Um and and they played Rogue One. Yeah. I woke I, I fell asleep at the beginning of Rogue One and woke up at the end of Rogue One. How dare you you know why I, I was ex- dude it was like three o'clock in the morning. How dare you but but what was funny was is that at the end of Rogue One the entire room applauded. Yeah, <laughs> like they had just seen it for the first time. That see, and that's and we were and it's that that just that just shows how strong the standalone movies can be. You know, we were in there for that when everyone yeah. started cheering at the end of yeah, Rogue we One. It's like it was really like it. It, it was. It, I mean, that's that's pretty. I mean, I thought that was awesome. You know what I mean? Like that just gives you proof of how how great the standalone movies can be. Right now, mm. what level of Disney fan would you say that you are? I'm a huge Disney fan. I'm an annual pass. Like my, like if you came into my house, okay, lots of Disney stuff, lots, and not just Marvel and Star Wars. I mean, in fact, I the the Star Wars stuff in the living room is at a minimum. In fact, the only thing in the living room is a framed tea towel from Star Wars Japan, the first Star Wars Japan with R two and C three PO. And uh, actually, no, there's two of them. We have two of them framed, and my master replicas Han Solo and Empire Strikes Back blaster in the in the case. That's really the only Star Wars stuff in the living room. In fact, now that I'm sitting here thinking about it, oh, in books, but they're on the bookshelves. Right. But now that I'm thinking about it, I have a lot less Star Wars stuff on display in my house than I used to. Really? Yeah. And it's not for, trust me, I am still big number one diehard Star Wars nerd. In fact, I actually enjoy the fact that I don't do as much Star Wars artwork officially as I used to. In fact, I haven't done anything officially in a few years. Um, and I like that. Uh, because I like surprises. 
I like not knowing things because like, when I did work for them, like, you know, I was one of those people, I, I held my NDA close to my chest and never let it, like, I have a, I have folders at home from when I was working on the Clone Wars stuff, uh, during Revenge of the Sith, when I was getting, like, files upon files upon files, like, discs worth of files of ships, turnarounds, characters, everything, well before, like, I got to show General Grievous before anyone saw what he knew it really looked like in the, in the web strip. Um, even on StarWars.com. StarWars.com, yeah. And... I still have those images that no one. I mean, I've seen things. I have things in files that I've never ever seen on the internet, and that's just, you know, and that's in part because I take that stuff seriously. But at the same time, you know what's going on, you, and and even though you know you kind of know where Rogue One was going, I still love the fact that I didn't know where it was going. You know what I mean? Right. I didn't know they were all going to die. I thought somebody. You didn't was know how they were going to get. There. I didn't it's know the they journey. were going to die. By the way, spoilers. Um, <laughs> <laughs> but well, not Bob Iger, but something. Chapek, who who was announcing? Oh, Live that's action. Alan, Alan, Hor- uh, Alan, Alan Horn. Horn. Totally I love Alan spoiled. Horn. He's so funny. <laughs> he spoiled that. That was the funniest line that Alan said in the live action panel. He said, oh, we gave you, uh, you know, when they're doing the recap, oh, first of all, we gave you The Force Awakens. Then we gave you Rogue One. Then we killed them all. <laughs> <laughs> and he's like, spoilers. Yeah. <laughs> he's so funny. He, I love Alan Horn. Alan Horn is the guy I want to take over for Bob Iger mm. if they don't give it to Kennedy. Because I think Kennedy would be a strong choice to replace Bob Iger as well. Bob Iger has done like, like, like being Disney fans. You, you'll know. Like, it, there's always a Walt and a Roy. Yeah. There's yes. always, the, there's always the creative and the and creative, the money, guy. the money guy and the creative guy. It was Frank Wells and uh, and 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 Eisner. And when oh. when Wells died, it was you know. I mean, he he got lost. They always need that yin yang, and then you got Bob Iger, and then you have John Lasseter, and that's why that's why the Disney has been so great over the last like fifteen twenty years because it's guys like that. So it's it's um, which is why Lucasfilm had to stay so small because yes. George was both sides of the brain. Exactly, precisely, and that's why I and and, and like now here's a question for you guys, how, and because I always want to talk to people about this, how do you guys feel about fans? Because we had this conversation the other night too, where you know, I've, I, it's one of those things that I say that nobody hates Star Wars more than Star Wars fans, and nobody hates Disney more than Disney fans. Like, how do you feel about people who like think by Disney buying Lucasfilm it was the worst thing to happen to Star Wars? There's so many different points of view on that, and I have a friend who was so against it because it's going to be too much Star Wars. It's going to be in your face. It's going to be everywhere. They're going to slap the name on every single product. Yeah, and. In a sense, he's and right, have, and he's right, and he's he right. is right. He's right, but I'm not. I, I don't go to. I don't go to the supermarket and buy spaghettios because Darth Vader's on them. I do. <laughs> yeah, but but, like, that, right. but that's my point. I <laughs> but, don't care. But that's you. You don't care. I love it. I, I love and it. I don't care. Like if I buy them, I buy them. If I don't, I don't. It doesn't matter to me that it's ever like I, another another comic. Or, uh, there's a comic book writer online who I'm who I'm friendly with, who kind of said the same thing. Like he's like, can you say oversaturated? He's like, yes, but here's the thing. It's still selling. People still want it. People still want Star Wars. Yeah. And when we heard that Disney was, we had just bought Star Wars, our first thought was more movies and a theme park. And a theme park. Yeah. Well, when it, when when Disney the day Disney bought Lucasfilm, October thirtieth, two thousand twelve. Exactly. I got a uh, I got a uh, an email from uh, Bill Gannon. Bill Gannon was my old boss at Lucasfilm. Uh, well, he was the boss of my boss. Like my boss was Pablo Hidalgo, who also wrote the, the scripts for the comics and such. And his boss was Bill Gannon. And Bill Gannon at the time had left Lucasfilm and went to Entertainment Weekly. And the email was literally within the hour of Disney buying Lucasfilm, we get the exclusive about talking to you about the park. <laughs> and I literally, he's like, he's like, once you're done talking to us, once you give us what we want, you can talk to anybody else. <laughs> and then, but, but that email showed up. And then 10 minutes later, ABC News emailed me. Then I got Fox News emailed me. And, 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 and yeah, all these news outlets were, e- were emailing me about the Dream Park map. Okay. Your- exactly. Yeah. yeah, because honestly, when that announcement was made, your map was all over the it was place. Everywhere. Because it was that's everywhere. what would come up when people would type in Disney, Star Wars. Matt, you know, Star Wars theme park, it yeah. comes, and it and still so, does. It yeah. still is the first thing that pops up. Would you consider that your signature piece for for Star Wars? For Star Wars, absolutely. Yeah. I and I and I let me tell you about let me tell you about the the creation of that piece. That the actual map of that piece is on is that artwork is not photoshopped together. That artwork is on the board. It is for it was something like twenty eight by forty. Wow, on a hard on a hard cold press board. Uh, pen, ink, watercolor, and marker, 
And it, everything that's on there is on there except for the Denzians walking through. I did them separately. The, uh, and the, the names of the city and towns and the trees on the outline. Cause it, when I put it on, when I put it in the computer, I found I was like, well, it looks a little bare. Let's surround it with trees like they do at Disneyland. Like, so it's surrounded, right. but everything else is on that board. Wow. And it's, how many it's, feet? It's, well, it's, 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 uh, like three feet by four feet. Okay. Wow. It's a big, wow. it's a big, and it took, that took a hundred hours. I bet. My goodness. Have you ever done any Disney artwork? Unofficially, yes. I do Disney artwork all the time unofficially. Like okay. if you go and look at my artwork, if you go to uh, my TomHodges.com leads to my DeviantArt page. You look through my DeviantArt page and there are Disney print. I love drawing the princesses. <laughs> and speaking of which. Wreck-It Ralph 2? The no. Wreck-It Ralph 2 stuff, yes. <laughs> oh, you know, let's, let's now talk about that. Okay, okay. Yeah. Oh, we're not, talk- we're not talking. Oh, you oh, want to? No, yeah, 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 yeah. Oh, okay. Yeah, no, we no, were, oh, we were please, kind please, of all please. over the place. But, yeah, now, but now let's focus. Because- I see, because I love, I love drawing the princesses because I have my own style. I don't draw them like like Disney draws them or the animators draw them. I, I have a- princesses. Yes. One well, this way. A whole bunch about of five just came up from the <laughs> elevator. A couple of fairy godmothers. Yeah. Um, but, oh, my God. Who's your that- favorite? My favorite princess? Yes. Rapunzel. That you like to draw. Oh, really? Well, not to draw. Actually, she's my favorite. She's my favorite princess. My favorite to draw. Um, I love drawing Elsa. Okay. And Ariel. Ariel and Elsa are the, and they're my two popular requests. I've sold more Elsa sketches than I've ever sold of Slave Leia sketches. Wow. Ever. I'm not even joking. When I draw an Elsa, it sells like it's gone. Right. And And see, that's the other thing. Like, people who hate on Frozen... You, you you can't deny it's 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 impact. I mean you can't. But um, that that clip they showed that whole thing they showed us at the at the at the animation panel is going to do is going to do things for Disney princesses. I've never like people who who are listening to this podcast need to understand so that we're it's, talking about the Wreck It Ralph. 2 we're talking about clip. the Wreck It Ralph two stuff. Yes, the Wreck It Ralph two scene that they showed us at the animation panel. I mean, Alan Horn opened his conversation up at live action about it. That's how big a deal it is because Disney makes fun of themselves. They make fun of the princesses. They pulled they, back the curtain. They pulled the curtain back in such a way that, I mean, they really, they, I mean, they really, I mean, when, for lack of a better, they went balls out to have fun with that. <laughs> seriously. No pun, no, seriously. Pun, no pun intended. I mean, they, I mean. For the people who have not seen this. Yeah, who just. Online? Yeah, no. there's a description is online. Okay, the there is detailed descriptions online. Basically, what it is is uh, Ralph and and Vanellope are are in the internet with yes, and yes is played by the the woman from Empire, yes. and she yeah. was in Hidden Fences. Taraji, yes, yes, um, she plays yes, who is kind of like the internet version of like I, I like. The it girl of the internet, uh, like inside the inside the 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 web, right? And she's showing them around, and they she's like, you need to send them to all these answers or things like that, where you can get all the information you need, and they go to ohmydisney.com, <laughs> which is and it basically they walk into the theme park essentially through the castle, which is and and you see Tie Fighters going by, and Iron Man flies by, and it's and there's all these great little like nippets, like there's like kids pressing. Uh, Buzz Lightyear's chest, like trying to make him make noises and sounds. And every time he does, he's looking at like there's like eye contact with somebody else. He's just like, just kill me. Uh, like that's another day. This I can't another day. Another and then there's this. like make me a Marvel. And then you see like little kids jump through, and it's a, a little girl comes out as Gamora. A little, and then a little guy comes out as Stanley. He's like Excelsior, <laughs> and all this stuff is really amazing. But then they show your people screaming, and you see the princesses come through, and they're. They're behind the line, like a like a red carpet type of thing, and their and their security are first order stormtroopers, <laughs> which is amazing. And then they get them backstage, and Vanellope's like, "I want to mess with these guys," and everyone's like, "No, no, let's go on, keep doing it." But Vanellope Vanellope twitches in. Vanellope's like, "No," and she flashes in, she glitches into them, and next thing you know, and I because we were showing in, they were showing us an animatic rough storyboard until right. then and then once they get her in that room they cut to actual animation and number one the princesses look unbelievable like that like we've seen Rapunzel and El- Anna and Elsa like anyone who's been you know 3D animated anyone who's new we've seen already but even they looked better than they did in their movies yes. and they looked amazing and they had all the voices all the real voices I mean except for the, you know I mean I hate to say it, the dead ones like Snow White and or the older ones like right. Cinderella and such but I mean they had like Jodie Benson was Ariel again and, and so on and so forth and it was just amazing and basically what they do is they start asking Vanellope questions about about you know 
I can't remember the exact questions. They're online. Like, but okay. once they say like, did, did, does like, is your journey something like always credited to the, you know a man taking care of you? And she's like, yes. And like us too. You are a princess. <laughs> and right there, there's a connection. Yeah. And then they start talking about Vanellope's sweatshirt. Then they and then they're like, oh, we should all have them. And they cut to them in. Like literally, Disney princesses, Disney bounding themselves. Yes. This is going to change. Like pajamas yeah, this is going to change. Clothes. Yeah, this is going to change cosplay. Yeah. Think about it like this: it's going to change Snow White cosplay, even though it's the descriptions are. I'm not going to reveal it because of the because of her. Okay. Yeah. Her, oh yes. Because of her whole facial thing, um, and uh, then they have the Disney bounding of the Disney princess. They're in like funny sweatshirts, and then there's Merida, who you can't understand, <laughs> and it's hilarious. And Penelope's like, "Oh, wait, did you guys understand what she said?" But no, nobody no, nobody understands what she nobody said. Understands. And then She's Ariel, that other studio. Ariel, Ariel's got the shirt that's like. It's like, you know, how it's got like, uh, like they had Han and Leia and Chewie and Luke and like one of those shirts, but it's, it's, it's all the little bobbles and witsits and now like it says like all the descriptive things in her song, oh, like the what's it's and okay, flotsam and not flotsam and jetsam, but yeah, the who's it's and what's it's yes, galore. all Yeah. All like yeah. that. But then That's she starts to sing and are like, shut up. <laughs> And everyone's like, Sh you need to shut up because all you ever do is sing. <laughs> and this is going to change cosplaying. Why? It's going to change. Because it's comfortable. Here's, oh here's my all God, these princesses like, laying around like, this is, this is what and, we can do? And oh here's my goodness. the other thing. It, if anyone in Disney marketing is listening, if you do not sell every one of those sweatshirts, mm -hmm. it is the biggest mistake Disney will ever make merchandise-wise. You're throwing your money you're, away. You're, thro you're throwing you're, money. You're throwing money away yes. not doing it. Like the, the millions they'll make just off of those sweatshirts alone, forget about it. Because think of every princess had their own signature sweatshirt. Mm -hmm. And whether it was cut a certain way or it had a certain, certain, it was just perfect. Seriously, perfect. And yeah. you couldn't ask for a funnier scene. You know, like in Zootopia, they kept showing as a trailer the whole DMV scene. Yes. For a trailer, they're going to show yes. this scene. This is this is going to grab a lot of, like, like and here's the thing. I, like I said, I'm a big Disney princess fan. I love the princesses. I love drawing the princesses. I love drawing the princesses more than I love drawing some Star Wars characters. <laughs> I got to be honest with you. They're fun to draw. Because drawing women is, is, is it, it, I, and here's the thing, as, a, as an artist, as growing up as an artist and trying to become a better artist, women were always harder for me. What made them easier to draw for me were looking at old Disney books and old Disney art books of the princesses and such. That's what helped me draw women better. <laughs> so, and that's not even a joke. And it's, that's a tip. No, Pro I tip. laugh because yeah. I, you look at the old Marvel comics. It's uh -huh. like those artists didn't really know how to draw women. Well, they, they knew how to draw them what they yes, wanted women to yes. look like. Well, even like, I mean, like, but even as it, but even as a comic book artist coming up, I mean, I'm talking like, I'm only talking like 20 years ago. You look at some of the women I drew 20 years ago and, and it's pretty rough. I mean, there were some rough looking chicks. So, um, <laughs> and I was, and I'm a Jim Lee fan and like, you know, a, you know, a Mark Sylvester fan, guys who draw women beautifully. You know what I mean? Like I, I, I went back to old school and was like, you know what? I need to look at the, the Disney guys. And once I started really paying attention to the old Disney guys, that's what made my women look much better. Because yeah, there's rounder edges yes. than it's from Marvel. But there's, all, but there's also sharper lines, too. Like, if you look at some of those draws, it's like they come to a point here or there. Or like, but, I mean, they're softer, but th the lines are, are smoother. You know what I mean? They're smoother, sharper lines. But, um, like, the shape. And that's where, that's where I really, really came to pay attention to those guys was the shape of women it's not so much you know um it's not so much the detail part of it, it's the feel and the the, the stroke and so right. like that but um but back on but back back to it um and then you get to the then you get to c3po coming in oh. that's right. and thank you r2d2 and like how oh, he doesn't like that we're sorry, BBA, and he gets <laughs> and he gets all like, oh my god, like you know, like you see the very anger. logical. But here and here's the best part about that. Anthony would have a problem with that too if somebody <laughs> said that. Like, Thank you, Arto. You, he'd lose his freaking mind. Uh -huh. I know him enough to know that. So, <laughs> well, what I I mean, I love this because Wreck It Ralph, the first one, came, I believe, before Disney bought Star yes, Wars. Yes, it did. It did. So they couldn't have anything, and now this. Disney There's buying so, Star Wars has opened up so many avenues for them. There's to go. so many games that there's so many games and 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 gaming things that like that, like from what I understand they wanted uh, who was the, who was the hero that Jane what's her name played in the first movie? You know who we're talking. Wait, what? Uh, in the first uh, Wreck It Ralph, 
the the oh. soldier the soldier that Jane what's her name played Jane Lynch Jane Lynch nice. played well apparently the original idea was to have her as like a Halo character. And they couldn't get the rights, but then the movie hits, and now and now everybody wants yeah. to be involved. So you're going to see a lot more. Th- you know what I want, hope is in it? Something with Tron. Oh, oh well, yeah. I mean, at this now. point, I mean, yeah, especially with well, the, now yeah. it's going to be like a big commercial for everything they have going everything on. Everything Disney will and be they, in this they movie. Yeah, through the roof to get the rights for all those video games. Yeah, and now it's like we have the rights to everything. We don't we got, need to we pay got a Marvel, nickel. we got Star Wars, we got yeah. this, we got that. Yeah, yeah. But when you know, when 3PO came into that that little vignette. He had a different look to him. Well, he, he's he's the animated version. I mean, those stormtroopers aren't going to look like guys either. When they because we only saw the animatic of the stormtroopers, the first order they're going right. to they're going to look like they're going to look Disney fied, Disney animation fied. They're not going to look like actual guys. You got you got to you got to put that in perspective too. Like the like those characters are going to look like Disney animated versions of those characters. Right. You got to look at it like that. You can't think of it like they're going to look. But like he looked, he looked more accurate. like he did it in the Droids cartoon back in '86. He looked better than that, though. Um, he looked a lot better than that. He just that. didn't look like he did it in the Clone Wars or Rebels. Well, that's good because I, I, I mean, as much as I like Clone Wars and Rebels, I'm like there are certain aspects of that animation I'm not a fan of. Sometimes it's a little too clunky. It's like it's like watching Toy Story one. And then watching Toy Story three, that you could see the, the dramatic the shift right. in how much the animation has changed over the years. I kind of got the impression this was a maybe a third render of what he's going to look it like. It might not finally. be the final. And see, that's the thing. It, it couldn't. It might right. not be the it, final animation. Yeah, yeah. Because I mean, they did show us the animatic of half of that sequence. Right. So, but I mean, the stuff that lo- does look like it was done was amazing. Yeah. Do you think yeah. that was Anthony Daniels' voice? It didn't sound. You like You know what? Him. It, I, if if I was to guess, it probably was. But you do know that uh, Tom Kane did a lot of 3PO stuff in Star Tours. Oh, really? I didn't yes. know that. Yeah, there was stuff that he couldn't get recorded, so they, they brought in Tom Kane. There's another guy who does 3PO's voice, and I'm blanking on his name, who did the video game, the Wii video game. Really? I think that was Tom. I think it was Tom Kane. Tom Kane does, Tom Kane does a lot of voices when the other guys can't show up. Yeah, uh, I, I want to say his name was Chris. Could be. I could be. I don't know. Very wrong. I just know that I, I know that Tom has done three PO a few times in the for the parks and for a couple other things. So, <laughs> or just get Stephen Stanton. <laughs> when one actor can't do it, or another reason, yeah. bring in Stephen. Yeah. Uh, let's wrap that part up by saying Ralph breaks the internet. That was that to me. That was the highlight of the animation panel. Yes. And I enjoyed the whole animation panel, but that was, that was the top, highlight. Yeah. That was so top. that's coming out the March of 2018. Yeah, so that's not that far away. So, no, yeah. not at all. So that trailer will be rolling out anytime soon. Oh, probably, definitely by thanks before Thanksgiving. Yeah. All right. Now, any other big topics from the animation panel? Um, you know what I'm not excited about, <laughs> and it's only because it's only be, it's only because I'm not interested. I'm, like I like the Cars movies. But I've never seen the planes movies. They don't. They don't grab me. Wasn't really cur- really interested in space. It's kind of like the Nutcracker from the live action movie. It's yeah. like it looks pretty. It looks gorgeous. But it's not for me. Space. Yeah, they did like yeah. a planes well, type of thing. Remember? And, yeah, the it was like very the, ju- the it was, jets. It's Disney Tunes. Studios. Disney Tunes. Disney Tunes right, Studios. Okay. Yeah, yeah. that space and this space. To it's kind of connected to. It's kind of connected to the Cars. Planes right. 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 Yeah, yeah. 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 After that, Wreck It Ralph. Exactly. Trailer. Yeah, I, yeah. My mind just went to that. Yeah. Yeah. So that was in the same vein as cars and yeah. planes. Now and it's th- they that gone doesn't to, to that's, outer space. that I'm not excited about. But I'm trying to remember the other stuff they showed us too. Like it's like it's so much stuff this weekend, and my brain isn't working properly. Yeah, that's okay. You well. know. So now let's talk about the Lucasfilm. Okay. Panel. All right. Yeah. Well, I figured. Yeah. I. I all right. Okay. <laughs> um, Lucasfilm live action. Little disappointed. That there was nothing more than a blurb about Han Solo. Yes. But I get it. Like you were saying the other night, if they showed us some original publicity stills, but with yeah. all the Aaron Reich and the new yeah. Chewbacca, that would yeah. have done it. I, I, I do feel like they should have shown us a little something. I understand why they didn't. I feel I understand why why they were why, why Alan Homer's kind of like, all right, well, let's move on. Like let's like like let they, they Han Solo's in production. Ron Howard's taking over. Blah blah blah. Like really kept it short and sweet. I think I'm. I think what I'm more bothered by is that we sat there and watched a Star Wars um, behind the scenes video, which was gorgeous. And from the uh, Last Jedi, from the Last Jedi, and Teary. When, but then you know, I could have watched it on the internet ten minutes later. 
I feel like I feel like when you when you're in a panel for like like let's put it this way, then then release the than, then release the Infinity War stuff. If you're going to release the Star Wars behind the scenes stuff that everyone gets to see, that should I mean show us something for ourselves. Something to be said for if we're going to be waiting ten hours and exactly. or twenty four hours in line, yeah, I waited that all that should time be our line. gift. I should see something that no one else is going to say, and then that's where my gripe is with the Lucasfilm stuff. And the same thing with Celebration. Like yeah, we got the trailer. And we got behind the scenes videos and stuff, but then like they would cut, they'd cut the video for stuff that they didn't want us to see that they wanted to show us at home that who, who didn't get right. to go to celebration, and I'm like, well, that's why I stood in line for this panel all night. I didn't. I, there's nothing I want. I wanted to see stuff. I'm only going to get to see that I'm going to know in my head for so long. Like, I, but. Now, because of stuff like that, it makes me go, okay, well, they should release the Infinity War trailer or the Mary Poppins thing or, or all that stuff. Like, like show, show, if you're going to go ahead and show stuff to people anyway, just show it to everybody. Just give it to us first and show it later in the day to everybody else. You know what I mean? It's like when you buy a, a convention exclusive and you wait a couple of hours in line only to know that it's going to be sold at every other convention afterwards. Exactly. Like, wait a minute. I waited because I thought I was go- going to only get it here. Yeah. This was my one and only chance. Yeah. I went to, I mean, that's, I mean, I waited in line two hours for Mickey's of Glendale today because I knew there was stuff in there I can't buy in the park or at, or at Company D or wherever, you know, wherever they sell Disney stuff. This is stuff you can only get either here at this particular show or at Mickey's of Glendale if you have an in at Mickey's of Glendale. Right. I have an in at Glen- Mickey's of Glendale, but still I bought the stuff today anyway. It's not the point. <laughs> but the point is, is that like I, I slept out on a hard concrete fuller all night long. With you know six thousand of my other fellow Disney nerds and Star Wars nerds and Marvel nerds to see things that nobody else is going to get to see, they accomplished that with everything but the Star Wars section of that panel. And mm-hmm. as a big Star Wars fan, I am a little disappointed that we didn't get uh, something from Han Solo to, to to make us feel like right. you know. Here's the thing: I, I I'm excited about the Han Solo movie. I still am, but I understand people being a little freaked out that with all the shakeups and everything, and still not seeing anything. Like at this point. With Rogue One or or The Force Awakens, and now at this point with The Last Jedi, we've seen stuff. We're a year, less than a year out. If they stay on schedule and it really does come out in May next year, we we are we are literally less than a year out from Han mm-hmm. Solo, and we haven't even seen what he, officially what he looks like as Han Solo. No, we haven't. And that and while that doesn't worry me. It bothers me, and and as a fan, I want to see something. Give me something. Well, we have seen. Some I don't need. I don't, pictures of Han Yeah, Solo. but we haven't really though. They've been in like you know from way over there, or like a spy photo of him wrapped up in something, so you it don't wasn't see a his whole costume. Shot yeah, like we haven't like seen that. like that official yeah. photo. The well, photos yeah. What part about the Infinity War trailer really what stuck out part to you? Didn't stick out. Yeah, it um, doesn't easier question. Um. Yeah. Um. Okay. Uh. Whew. I liked how, oh man, like that whole opening where the guardians <laughs> are like to come around and like, and and then then Thor just slaps up against the wind, the the, the windshield, and he's like, oh, get it yeah, off, wipers, get wipers, wipers, get it off. Um, but yeah, I mean, it, now now like little pieces of like the last Guardians movie, the latest Guardians movie, are falling into place for this. Like, wake him up. Like, who else would have been in? Mantis wakes up Thor. Right. You know I mean? Like, a whole new character that's in there, it's involved, is able to wake him up. And and then, you know, then you show, then you see Rocket and, and Thor in the little, in the little, uh, the, the, the little pods, like, looking around, checking out, you know, all the destruction and everything and kind of tracing it back to Earth. And, like, see, to me, like, and that makes whatever's going to happen in Thor Ragnarok that much more interesting because how did Thor get from what's happening in that movie to, to floating, floating in outer space, space. Yeah. which makes me wonder what happens at the end of Ragnarok yeah. and the end credit scenes. I have to imagine the end credit scenes because, I mean, anyone who saw Spider-Man Homecoming, spoilers ahead, the, the, the end credit scene was, was hilarious, but it doesn't lead to anything other than kind of like a fun little gag. Um, whereas I feel like the next couple of movies have to be real serious hardcore lead-ins to what's coming um i think that thanos look i mean like everyone kind of complains about how the marvel universe villains for the exception of loki are kind of semi-incompetent which i disagree with i think every villain they've had um has had their place they just haven't been like the, the point is that the heroes are going to overcome it but you get now you get Thanos, who in the Marvel Universe is one of the biggest bads there is. And 
he just looks like it's I mean like like it's one of those situations where you look at like that scene where he goes and he he takes yeah. the infinity gauntlet. it's only got two stones in it and he hits the moon like you know like he like gestures towards the moon and then like a second later it explodes and starts bringing debris down on the Avengers I mean like that's insane yeah. and then Spider-Man in that other costume from the end of Homecoming yeah. and like you see a spider sense while he's on the bus and his hairs his hair rise up, up. Richard I mean loves that. everything about I mean everything about that teaser it just blew me away. If we had told a seven-year-old Tom Hodges that there's going to be an, an Avengers Infinity what, War movie, what, how badly would you have just implode? Would have kicked you in the shins and called you a liar. <laughs> but, the, but, but, the truth, like, but think about it. I, I, uh, my uh, a buddy of mine online, he's an art collector, his name is Pat, he, was, he, was, he posted this last week, he's like, a couple weeks ago on, on, on Facebook. He's like, I, I'm, I'm going to see... Spider-Man Homecoming in the theater next to it is Guardians of the Galaxy and as I drove in there were billboards for Guardians of the Galaxy Spider-Man Homecoming and um, Wonder and, Woman and Wonder Woman he's like if you would have told me 10 years ago yes. any of that would have been going especially Guardians of the Galaxy if you would have told me 10 years ago there was a Guardians of the Galaxy movie and, and let alone two and there are two of them two of them are probably two of the best movies in the Marvel Universe movies it, it my personal favorite is Captain America stuff, but but if you were to, if you were to tell me tell someone that ten years ago, they would have called you a liar. Especially Guardians of the Galaxy. Who would have thought? Who would have thought that was going to ever happen? If you took a picture of a marquee today, went back uh -huh. in time to 1975 and showed me a picture, it's like yeah, that's down the street. You have Planet of the Apes. Mm -hmm. You have a Spider Man. You have Wonder Woman. Yeah. You have Guardians of the Galaxy. This is yeah at the Newton Corner Movie Theater. <laughs> of course it is. It's it, well, I mean, for the longest time, it was always just Batman. Like we, that was Batman and then Spider Man for a while and X Men. Like that was all we ever got comic book movie wise until Iron Man. And once Iron Man came, that was it. Whoa, all bets whoa, whoa. Were off. You're, you're skipping over Howard the Duck. As I was saying, <laughs> that movie's. Oh, so, <laughs> okay, I'm sorry. Go on. That, that movie's hard to hard to talk about. <laughs> Not for us. <laughs> oh, I bet. And he, here's the other thing. I found that since they've gotten Star Wars, since they've gotten Lucasfilm. It's kind of been the weak link of the live action presentations. They don't. They haven't. Anna they never announced anything. They didn't give us a trailer the last time, except for replaying the trailer we already had from from Celebration. See, that's a problem when there's a Celebration during the same time as a D twenty three, because all the good stuff goes to Celebration. So when the trail like. That's I think just the opposite. They save all the big announcements for D23 since this is more But we didn't the, get any announcements. Of, well, you're right. But last time we did get all the announcements here at D23. What did we get at D23 announcement-wise? Well, we got the Star Wars land, that announcement. That's true, but that's already – but that's something – I mean – like that, like, and you're right. That was a huge surprise. We didn't know that was coming. We didn't know it was coming yet. We knew at some point it would be coming, but we didn't know it would be. It, we were going to get it there. But um, I mean, in terms of like, yeah, we yeah we got a lot of announcements with the hotel and Florida and and all that stuff. But at the same time, I'm talking about like feature stuff. Like we don't get any feature stuff in. Like this should be like. I mean, yeah. Celebration should get something, but we should have gotten an announcement, even an announcement for another anthology movie, something. Or I an feel announcement like announcement for the next celebration. Yeah, why not? Why not? Right. Um, which I don't think we're going to get an announcement for until after the new well, year. I think now with D twenty for celebration, it'll just be for celebrating with with the fans and celebrating the Star Wars universe. Whereas D twenty three will focus on what's to come. I and see, I I would totally agree with that if they had given us another like, right some kind yeah. of announcement or a picture of Han and Chewie. Like I, I'm gonna I'm I'm gonna keep bringing it back to that. I feel like like I am a little disappointed. Like it's the, it's it is my big disappointment appointment of the whole the whole weekend. My only disappointment really is that we didn't get a picture of Han and Chewie, just a photograph on a I screen. I want to see a clip of them in action. Yeah, but I think that's asking too much at this point. They've right been shooting now. for since uh, since but, November. But, since, but, uh, I'm sorry, but February. Keep, but keep in mind, a lot of that stuff isn't going to make it into the movie now. It, it doesn't. It doesn't matter if we see a clip behind the scenes. Of and Han we don't know how that stuff around. looks. We don't even know how that stuff looks because, as far as we're concerned, as far as we've been hearing, it's, it's him running around like Ace Ventura with a big hairy guy. Well, next I'm sure to him. at this point. Lord and Miller had shot some kind of action sequence with Han and Chewie. Probably. Show us 
five seconds of that, of Han and Chewie ducking I laser you, bolts. But here's the thing. You want footage. I just want a photograph. I'm not asking for I don't, anything they, more than a photograph. But they have it. They have the footage. So why not just give us a five, ten second clip? It could. Well, they didn't, you guys. <laughs> I'm sorry. But was there, so that was your low point. My what low was point was. Point. My high point? Yes. Panel, the high points for no, me? No, just anything. Anything? Not the high panel, point? But like... The whole weekend. Yeah. My high point. It's meeting someone, seeing something for mm. someone... Merchandise, you know, uh, you know it, it's not about buying stuff for me. Like I, like I, like I, I honestly, I, it's not something I, I really. It's not about the purchases with me. It's it's because when I do other like normally when I do a convention, I mean, you guys know me from you know I do San Diego, I do Comic Cons, well out Stanley's L.A. and mm-hmm. and all at WonderCon and so on and so forth. Like I'm set up at shows. Like this is the only convention I go to as a fan. You know what I mean? This, and and has been for the last um, since it started. Everything else for me has been work. So, and, but when I come to this, it's like, unless there's something I like, in, like, there was nothing at this show I needed to purchase. So, spying stuff wasn't the point. My, go, my big gets in term, my high points are, th- I have three high points the, the Wreck It Ralph stuff from, from the animation panel, the Infinity War stuff from the live action panel. And seeing the Star Wars land model up close, Galaxy's Edge up close. Those are my high points. Those are, to me, I got to do those. I got to take a lot of photographs of the model. I got to talk to Imagineers about it. Probably my high point would be seeing Galaxy's Edge. Cool. Absolutely. Okay, now one final question. What do you want to see them do differently for the next D23 convention? (sighs) You know... I like the way they do D23. I really do. I like that um, even on Sunday, it's 9 to 7. It's a full day of a convention. Um, what I'd like to see them do differently, and it's going to come back to what we were talking about before, I want their Lucasfilm presentation to be better. Yeah. I want that to be better. Well, it was very standard to their other presentations. Where I the director think would come out and talk to the actors, ask them a very simplistic question, <laughs> and that didn't. I thought Lucasfilm would just have changed that no, and do their see, own thing. No, that doesn't bother me. Bring that out a droid. Bother. Bring out a character. Bring that out a doesn't. Puppet. That doesn't bother me. I don't. That bothered that, me. That doesn't bother me because that. I mean, that's their formula for D twenty three presentation. But they're better than that. But. Even with when even at the last D twenty three when it was the Force Awakens was what we were waiting for. We got a lot of really great, like, snapshots behind it, like that we hadn't seen before. Like, then they did that with the Last Jedi stuff too. But, but like I said, like when you had when they when they opened that panel up with their slate for the next three years, and all the movies they had on the slate, I feel like the fact that Han Solo was up there, and and. And of course, we're not going to see anything for episode nine. Of course not, because there's nothing to show. They're still making, they're finishing episode, episode eight. But um, with his Han, with the Han Solo thing up there, they should have either announced another anthology movie, yeah. or given us like a photograph or a clip. I'll go with you on that one. Something, give us something to wet our whistles to get us to get us to get us thinking about it a little bit more. But like. Um, I don't think they really need to change much in how they do it. I just think they need to give us... I mean, we're, we're there. We've waited all night long. Give us a little something that they're not going to automatically throw online afterward. My, like I said, the only thing I would change about the way any of this is done... And, and don't give us the hard sell on a movie that we're not sure about. Mm-hmm. A Wrinkle in Time, The Nutcracker. They really jammed that down our throats. Like, to me, that was like... like I That was, that was where I, I feel... Like, I want to see more about, um, about infinite. Like, you know, give yeah. me, give me, give me, give me ten more minutes of Marvel where we talk about Black Panther okay. or Ragnar, or even finally bring Brie Larson out and show us yeah. a mm. picture, show concept Captain art Marvel. of her as, as Captain Marvel. Because yeah. I've talked to Andy Park, and I can say this openly because he said it openly at a, at, a, at an appearance that he, Andy Park is one of the, uh, the he's one of the lead concept artists for the Marvel movies. Okay, he's designed her costume already. It's designed. Show us concept art. They gave us. They showed us concept art of the Thanos, yeah. and Josh Brolin was down there signing. They, we've seen right. the maquettes of, of his other children. That was another high point for me. Like to see those five. Oh my god! <laughs> but um, but you know what I mean. Like, give us a little something that they're not going to throw out to everybody else on the internet. Give okay. us. You know, they could have easily given us a clip of 
of something from Star Wars. Like, it doesn't have to do with Luke or Ray. Give us something with Poe, or or you know, or, or you know, even just like a, a, a something. Or with, I would have loved to have seen John Boyega and Rose interacting. Yes, on screen. Something. I would love to give see us that. a little. Give us a little clip of that. Give us something they're not going to give to everybody else five minutes later, because that's exactly what it was. Like I got by the time I got out of that that sh- out of that presentation, that video was online. Right, and that's all well and good, and it's the way they do things with Star Wars. They 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 put it online automatically, but give us something special. That's my only gripe about the D twenty three live presentations is that the the Lucasfilm presentation part of it is the weakest part of it, and has been since they've gotten Lucasfilm. When they had put up the chart of all the next couple of years, yeah, it did say a Star Wars story, Han Solo untitled Han Solo. project. So it give goes, us the title. It goes under the. A Star Wars story like they did with Rogue yeah. One. I didn't know they were going to put all of those under the Star Wars story oh, yeah. Yeah. subheading. No, that the standalones are the standalones and even the sequels the standalones because I got to imagine if Han Solo does well, it will get a sequel. Yeah. Um, and that's okay. See, that's the other thing about, about the Han Solo movie, why I feel like people should kind of just let it happen and see what happens is that, I mean, the, these are the, the people complaining the loudest about this, them not needing a Han Solo movie are the people complaining the loudest that those books that were from the, uh, the expanded universe from the original original Spanish universe no longer count. You know what I mean? Like Unsolo this is yeah, exactly those three books. Like these are the same people who like they want one thing, but but the, and they can't have another. So the other one should negate. The, you know what I mean? Like they like they have this whole thing in their head where like this is what this is this is law. This is not. But this no longer is law. These are legends. It's like campfire stories. Whereas this is the canon now. Except that let it happen. Maybe you'll enjoy it if you just like open yourself up to it. Like the Rogue One thing we talked about the other night. We were talking about how like how many people said they didn't need Rogue One until they saw it. Almost half the people who are Star Wars fans said that. I know people who are Star Wars fans who are like, I'm not seeing it because I don't need it. And then they found themselves watching it and they were like, ah, it's one of my favorites. Right. You know what I mean? Like, that's the whole thing. Like, let it happen. Be a fan. Just have a little bit of patience and enjoy it. That's, that's my whole, that's my whole thing. Like, I've come to, I've come to, I've come to terms with fandom. All different fandom at this point. And you know what did it for me? This show, this weekend. And it's a weird thing. Like, because everybody's got their thing. Whether you like Twilight, which is horrible in my eyes, but you know what? You're a fan of something. You enjoy it. You, I'm no longer going to make fun of people who like stupid, like, stupid things. I, and I, I'm one of those guys like, oh my God, I can't believe you like that. I can't believe you watched The Real Housewives or something like that. But you know what? If that's what makes you happy, if that's what makes you geek out, run with it. Right. The only thing I won't say that about is Kardashians because I hate those people. <laughs> but seriously, like, like if you love if you love something that much that you have your T-shirts, you get your posters, you buy your toys, your collectors, mugs, everything, enjoy it. I'm not going to poke fun at you. I mean, I don't. I might not like it. It might not be my cup of tea. But you're you're a fandom of something, and just run with it. Enjoy it. Be be what it be whatever it is. So next D twenty three, you want to see a better? I want to see a better, well produced, well produced Lucas panel. I mean, I understand I, why okay, Kennedy I, wasn't I'm with you. I understand why Kennedy wasn't there. She's probably overseas with the Han Solo. I'm production. sure she is. Um, but I, that's what I want from D twenty three. Like everything else, I'm okay with. I think they should allow a little more time for 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 overages with the with the live action panel and the animation panel. Although the animation panel didn't feel like it was rushed at all, I felt like it was done really well. Um, but the live action panel things happen when you're when you're dealing with real people and and orchestras and things like right. that. Let it let give it an extra hour just in, an extra hour cushion just in case so you don't feel so because they're yeah, I agree the Marvel panel part of it seemed a little rushed like they skipped over something or they were they like let's cut this completely I felt like that was possible but. With 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 Lucasfilm, I feel like with the Lucasfilm panel, Lucasfilm portion of the presentation, they need to up their game in a big way. In some something, some way, they need to they need to up it. Um, whether they decide to hold a trailer back from of something for for the next celebration just to give us a T twenty three, do it or give us the next trailer and not put it online afterward. Like give us the next trailer that's going to come out in September for for Last Jedi. Give it to us here. But no one can video it because they can't. They don't have their phones or their Google Glasses. They're all all their. They can't bootleg it. We can only talk about it. Yeah. You know right. what I mean? And us talking about like the Infinity War stuff and the and the Wreck It Ralph stuff. People are like, there are people listening that's going, oh my god, I can't wait to see it because of our excitement for it. Yeah. It's still people are still going to watch it a million times online when it's out. Yeah, just like at celebration. But give us something. 
they had showed everyone at the heroines of Star Wars the first episode yes, of Forces of Destiny. Exactly. We didn't see that. We didn't. At home. No one else saw it. We didn't see it at home, but they, they saw even it cut there. the live stream. Yes, they did. I, wa- I was watching it. I watched it at home while I was working, and that was see. I, and I do appreciate that part of it. And I wish they would do that here too, yeah. where they would live broadcast on YouTube the panels. Yes, that's what it, everyone, all the Skywalkers, that would be a great were, change too. Were asking us. Are they live streaming this? Mm. Why didn't they live stream I think this? It, I, 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 they, but what's funny is my wife, who, who you know, she's a VIP coordinator at the resort. At the offices, they were live streaming the, the panels. Oh. Yeah, so she was watching a lot of the panels at the office. Oh. While she was working, she was watching some of the panels. Like she got to see the, the Legends panel, and she got to see a few other things. But like they didn't, but, they, but she didn't see the animation panel, and she didn't see uh, the live action panel. But she got to see a few things. Uh. Wow, good to know that maybe they're they're testing it for the future. Possibly, it could be, but they but I do agree with that. I think if they can do it at celebration, yeah, they can not? do it here. Yeah. And then and then like we're gonna cut the feed while while we while we show the clip, and then we're gonna come back, yeah. and they can hear like the reaction. Like, could you imagine hearing the reaction of people <laughs> after that Infinity yeah. War stuff? Yeah. Or the record of stuff like lost their minds down my face, and I we were all laughing so hard, laughing ridiculous. Like we couldn't even hear all the jokes, and yet it was where I was. I was uh, uh, for the animation. I was front row, and I I was on the end of the row, but the the seat and the end was occupied by a security guy, basically to make sure a guy like me doesn't try to run up and grab Mandy Moore or something. (laughs) I look over during the princess thing. He's rolling. He's dying. This guy is like a large black guy he's like he's just stoic he's a real sweet guy he's talking to him for like 20 minutes before the thing started but that princess stuff he was dying he was <laughs> he was into it he loved it but and see and that's the whole point it's like that stuff that stuff connects with everybody Right. That right. stuff is is, is, is is forever. Now, yeah. if anyone wants to connect with you, uh, Mr. Oh, Tom well, Hodges, this is how you can where reach can me. they find you online? If you really want to follow me on a daily basis, I post art almost every day. Um, is uh, my Instagram is Hodges Art, H O D G E S A R T, all one word, lowercase. That is my Instagram. That is also my Twitter. Although my Twitter gets really political, and if you want to stay away from it, I don't. I don't. I, I highly recommend it. Stay away from it. Um, or uh, you know, my Facebook page is Hodges Art, and you know, I have uh, the Art of Tom Hodges on Facebook art page, and uh, and my website is TomHodges.com. It's my it's my URL. It goes to my DeviantArt page. You can check out some of my artwork. Lots of Disney stuff in there. Mix in Star Wars mashups and so on and so forth. But uh, yeah, that's it's, that's that's what's going on with me right now. Oh, and, and well, how can I not say this? Antis Comics, it's uh, the comic book company my wife and I started. Uh, how is it spelled? A-N-T-I-I-S. Okay. It's, a, it's, a, uh, it's, it's a it's kind of a mashup of something my father always says when he tells a story, which is, and there it is. <laughs> so I kind of worded it, put a piece it together and made Antis Comics. <laughs> we have a booth in Small Press at San Diego Comic Con, uh, LL5 in Small Press. We have the first issue. We're going to have pin, uh, enamel pins, a whole bunch of other goodies at the booth. But you can also con- you know, follow Antis Comics on Instagram and Twitter and get the lowdown on when we have books coming out and we have stuff going on. So, yeah. All right, good deal. Oh. Good deal. I'm glad we had the, we had you on again since an your last appearance. An extended discussion on the 100th episode. You have to have me on like around like Last Jedi time, and so we could talk about that. Oh, I'm, I'm sure, sure we can have you on. Yeah. You gotta, you gotta. I'll you have gotta. you on soon. So shout outs, Skywalker shout outs. Which Skywalkers get props from here in Neverland? Who was tweeted out? Shout out. Who was photoball? Shout out! Who was shared a post? Shout out! Okay, shout outs this week are going to be a lot from Twitter because there was a lot of tweets that we really loved. So I want to bring up Chris Contreras, who is at Beta76 on Twitter. He tweeted, listening to an episode of Skywalking Pod, then it's time for Sky Talkers Pod. And he posted a fun pic of Hayden Christensen that must have been a Teen Beat cover for that that tweet. I thought that was cute. So, Sky Talkers and Skywalkers. Isn't is, that fun? Is Teen Beat still a thing? Oh, no, not anymore. This was back in the day. This was back in, I don't know, 2003? 2002, probably, 2005. But was Teen Beat still in publication back then? <laughs> Did you ever get Teen Beat? Uh, you know, I didn't. It was like the... the the Vogue for kids. Oh, and I know, I know what it was. Tweens. 
I definitely saw it like at summer camps. You know, I'd have friends on. What is that? And <laughs> there's someone waving something out our window. Oh, your dad. Oh. Oh. <laughs> that was freaky. What was that? <laughs> oh my gosh. Okay. Sarah's dad was just waving at us out the window. Yeah. But always thought it was a shadow moving. Yeah. So it was like this weird horror movie type yeah, thing of someone totally. waving like celery or asparagus. Yeah, in the middle of something, the day. Something green in his hand. <laughs> <laughs> that was crazy. Oh my gosh. All right. Woo. Okay. All so, right. Tiger Beat, Teen Beat. All those oh, yes. fun magazines. Yeah, so I definitely saw them. I never subscribed, but like, you know, that was the thing at summer camps. You know, someone would have the team beat and you'd like read through it with your flashlight under the covers or something. I, I don't know. I guess the predecessor to Teen Beat would uh -huh. be like Dynamite Magazine and Pizzazz. Okay. <laughs> this is the 70s and early 80s. Okay. <laughs> All right. Now, what else do we have? All right, so I want to give a shout out to at Diz Geekly, who tweeted at Inside the Magic asking if they had recorded the Alan Menken concert at the D23 Expo. Well, Inside the Magic tweeted back and said, we were almost everywhere, but unfortunately not there. The good news is Skywalking Pod was, here's their video. And Inside the Magic links to our YouTube video of Alan Menken concert, which I have posted. It took me like a whole day to upload this thing because it's like an hour and a half. And HD. Anyway, so they tweeted the link to that, and Diz Geekly was very excited about it and posted comments on our YouTube channel and on Twitter. So we want to thank both Inside the Magic and at Diz Geekly. So thank you so much. For anyone who doesn't know about the Alan Menken concert, mm. in a nutshell, what did we see at the concert? Okay, so Alan Menken had a one man show at D23 Expo, and what he did was basically, he has had an incredible career. Like, he's done, you know, he's composed the music to Beauty and the Beast, the Lion, or not the Lion King, uh, Beauty and the Beast, Little Mermaid, uh, Little Shop of Horrors, a bunch of, like, commercial ad jingles before that. He's done many of the Broadway musicals of Disney as well and what he and Tangled Tangled of course and so what he did throughout this concert was start at the very early beginning of his career he plays a few he plays like a jingle for an insecticide <laughs> a pesticide you know he just he just takes little bits and pieces from his career and he played them but tells stories and anecdotes while he's playing the music or in between playing the music so he had a lot to say about Howard Ashman uh, who, of course, was his lyricist for The Little Mermaid and Beauty and the Beast before he died of AIDS mm. back in the day. And that's always been a very sad uh, thing that Alan Menken brings up, but it, it was very touching and emotional. And just the songs that he's composed are just amazing. I mean, Hunchback of Notre Dame, he, he played the Tangled music, he Newsies, he played Newsies. Uh, and so it was... It was it's just a great concert and you may or may not need like an entire box of tissues as you watch this concert. Well, wow, no wonder you wanted to see this. Mm -hmm. It's like Alan Menken unplugged. Yeah, and I happened to get a great seat in the front row of a section in that big hall. So I got some really great video. I just set it on my lap and, and just recorded the whole thing for you guys. Oh, nice. Yeah. All right, now we're all caught up on Alan Menken. Absolutely. All right, moving right along. Yes, I have a one more Twitter shout out, and that is for at Baking Mom 14, who is Michelle Morris. And she tweeted about our latest D23 Expo episode. As usual, fan flipping tastic podcast made me feel like I was at D23 along with both of you. P.S. Glad you found your Apple Watch. <laughs> <laughs> So thank yeah, you. us too. Yeah, <laughs> thank you, Michelle. We want to thank you so much, and I just want to give a big shout out to our Skywalker Facebook group, which, as you know, is a great place for Skywalkers to get to know each other. And you guys were all sharing photos and just kind of reveling in all the D twenty three Expo fun. And right now, as San Diego Comic Con is going on, I know that Brian Sims is currently there, taking lots and lots of photos and posting pictures in our Facebook group. So that is a great place to find other Skywalkers. So if you want to join Facebook group, just search Facebook for Skywalking Through Neverland group and you can request to join and make sure you answer those two questions. Otherwise, we won't let you in. 
Yeah, I made use of some good downtime yesterday between shows by watching Brian's videos. Oh, nice! Yeah, he's got oh, a lot. That's posting live videos yeah, as well. Yeah, yeah. Thank you, Brian, for that. It's it's like being there、mm -hmm. without having to fight the crowds. Yeah. All right, now with that, let's check in with our good friend and author of Seen Unseen Disneyland and more Seen Unseen Disneyland live from the floor of D23 Expo. <laughs> We are now talking to Mr. Ross Flores, a veteran of skywalking through Neverland and the author of Seen Unseen Disneyland and more Seen Unseen Disneyland. So, Ross, how's the convention D23 Expo going for you? It was fantastic this year. We got a great location in the gallery. We had lots of great fans coming by, people coming by just to visit, people buying the book, people with questions. We have been busy the whole time, and it's been a great experience. Yeah, any high points of the convention for you? You know, one of the biggest high points was all the cosplayers. There were some really great ones, and I actually got into taking their pictures. And for a while there, for some reason, my feed was、uh, trending, and I actually had cosplayers coming over and wanting their pictures taken for a while. So I had a really good time with taking pictures of all the great cosplayers here. Really, what's been some of your favorites? So some of the favorites is the crossover Jedi's. They're like just walked by was Huey, Dewey, and Louie as Jedi. And you had like princesses dressed as Jedi, and you know even a Meg dressed as Jedi. So that was really interesting, seeing all the crossovers into Star Wars. Now there's some cosplayers here that you look at them and you look at them, and it's like, okay, I, I know that's something really obscure, but I just can't figure it out. Have you seen anything like that? And you ask them, so you, who are you, and how did that go? Yeah, so one that came by yesterday was a, a nice lady, and she was dressed in bright colors with bold patterns on her on her clothing, and her hair stood straight up into a point. And I kept looking at her, and I was trying to figure out who she was. And then finally, a friend leaned over and said, "Meet the Robinsons." And it was like, of course, that's exactly who that is. What was the most extravagant costume you've seen? Probably one I saw about four or five hours ago. There was a lady dressed as、um, Maleficent. But it was Maleficent with、uh, an added like、uh, crow's beak on her on her head, and it was just—I mean, there was just so much layers to her costume and so many different things. It was just she obviously put hours and hours and hours into that costume. I think the most extravagant costume I had seen was someone dressed as the Matterhorn. Did you see this? I've seen it online. I did not see it, but one along those lines is—wait, was that you? You were the matter. Well, well, think that, that. Oh, I'm sorry. You know what? I don't know why. I always get that. Come on over. Come on. You know, we were talking about the most extravagant cosplayer, and who happens to walk by, but the person wearing that costume. She's not wearing it right now. Yeah, I can imagine. So tell us about what, what are the chances of this happening? And of course, we're believing that you are who you say you are. Elliot and I won the、um, the mouse grade for、um, my category, inspired by Disney, and、uh, before Big Thunder Mountain with a working train and everything. <laughs> yeah, that and you had a handler that was dressed as a ride operator. Yeah, that was my husband. He was the cast member for Big Thunder Mountain. I think that was the showstopper of all showstoppers because it was like one of those Christmas train sets. You had a train going all around you, and how long did that take to construct? And is that was that a, was that your idea? Um, yeah, it was my idea. It took us about a month, but long, long hours. So, <laughs> did you go through different different ideas of different rides you were you were thinking of?、Um, I've done pretty much all the mountains before in a smaller version,、um, and then I was at MouseCon with the Matterhorn,、um, but it did not work. So people could say, "Oh, it'd be great if it worked." And so I go, "Well, I'll see you at、uh, D23 Expo and、uh, with a working train." So. And how much did that weigh? More than you? You know, I didn't weigh it, but I'm guessing 25, 30 pounds. Well, we're looking at a picture right over here. Wow, that's that's just incredible. And what is this made out of? I'm guessing a lot of no, not fiberglass. That would be way too heavy. It's、um, a steel frame, and then there's foam and fabric on top、so、that I hand sew to make look like rocks and lots of wooden things I built and. Yes, I got a good workout. I kept it on as like all day long, and、uh, it's a little sore, but totally worth it. <laughs> wow! And what's your next venture? What's your next ride you're gonna do? I'm still thinking about that. I got a lot of ideas from people, and we'll see what happens.、Yeah. Russell, what do you think? What, what should she be?、Um, how about、uh, the Himalayas from Walt Disney World? 
See, we haven't been to Walt Disney World in a long time, so we try to stick with Disneyland. But I. But you got the gorilla and all that other stuff you could add that would in. That would be very cool. Maybe you could make yours work. That's right. <laughs> <laughs> oh, I'm thinking like a teacup. Just walk around spinning all day. Wouldn't that be really fun? Yeah, it would. <laughs> Or maybe it's a small world because we all know how much we love to hear a small world on a loop all day. Oh yeah, I would. <laughs> so after all the ideas you had heard, which which is the one that's go that's making you go, hmm, that's an idea. Um, probably Indiana Jones because a lot of people were talking about that one when they saw me, and not sure how I would do that because I try to do the outside of a ride, so I would be bringing the inside of a ride to a costume. So you could do the temple front that you go through when you go into the building. You could work on that, the yeah, temple. Yeah, so I got a lot of ideas going on. <laughs> and if people want to see this costume, where can they go to see it? Uh, they could go to my Instagram ac account, um, Tina's Disneyland Costumes. And you can check out all my creations on there. Okay. Anything on Facebook? Uh, I don't have a Facebook um, for... I have a personal one, but I don't have one for my... MySpace? Uh, no. <laughs> can you give us your pager number? I uh, know. <laughs> and what, which contest did you win? Uh, the Mouse Garade. And what uh, category was it? Uh, inspired by Disney. What did you win? Uh, I won this awesome trophy. It says I was first place winner. And... Uh, Get to display it, and now I can say I'm an award-winning costume designer. <laughs> well, great. Well, thanks for coming by, and thanks for timing everything out for today. <laughs> Thank you so much. Sorry. No, no, that was great. We couldn't have planned that better. <laughs> now, back to you, Russell. Back Top to our previous interview. Now in progress. <laughs> Top of that. So, actual ones that I actually saw in person. Person was the one where um, a guy was in a lark, and he was had a pirate ship. And oh, yeah. he was dressed as a pirate, and the right rear cannon actually fired. A big old puff of smoke would come out when he would fire his cannon. I saw him numerous times, but I never saw that. Yeah, whenever he stopped, if you started talking to him, he would actually fire off his cannon. <laughs> I've seen him about 35 times this uh, just today alone, so I'm sure if we keep on talking, like our luck has it, <laughs> he's going to roll out right on by. Now, what costume have you seen the most? Which character was most represented? Probably either Maleficent or Meg, or probably the two I saw the most of coming by. Meg? Oh, if you look right behind you, there's the red-headed pirate. I've seen a good number of those. Yeah, I've seen a couple of those, not as many as I kind of expected with all the, the stuff going on with the redhead right now. Yeah. Um, that's actually a really good costume from what I can see of it. But, uh, yeah, Meg is from Hercules. Yeah. Um, she's a character. She's the one in the purple dress with the brown hair that kind of swirls around a little bit. Um, saw a lot of her. And then obviously Maleficent, you know, different Maleficents. Um, the other thing is a lot of people that are cross-dressing into different characters. So you have males in women's costumes and women in men's costumes. Like I just had a Captain Jack walk by and I went to ask could I have a picture and she started talking. I'm like, oh, okay. <laughs> I didn't expect it. Right. And if you look to your right, you'll see Judy Hopps and Nick Fox. Nick Fox. Nick Wilde. Oh, down I, there? Yeah. yeah. From Zootopia. Saw a lot of those. In fact, Sarah right now is wearing her Run Disney Judy Hopps outfit. Yeah, I was going to say, I haven't seen a lot of Nicks, but Judy's, I've seen quite a few Judy's around. Yeah, and I would, I would say if anyone has been represented the most, it would be Moana. I did see a lot of those, and there was actually one. I'm not sure if she was working in a booth around here. She walked by us several times. She was, like, dead on. She was the right age, the right look. You'd swear that she just walked out of the movie. Yeah, and a lot of Lilos, too. Actually, I didn't, haven't seen any Lilos. About three of them just passed by us in the last 20 minutes. Not so many straight Star Wars costumes. A lot of mashups. Just not a lot of direct Star Wars cosplayers. Yeah, the only ones I've seen that are just straight... Star Wars characters uh, would be Jedi and mostly Ben Kenobi, younger Ben Kenobi. Yeah. Yeah. Our friend Donald Wicks was a rebel fleet trooper, obi Shan was in his Jedi outfit, but other than that, I haven't seen any 501st, anything in armor. Yeah, I've, I saw probably at least two that I suspect were 501st, and one was definitely a white trooper, original trooper, um, walked by and I asked him if he was 501st and he said he was. And he wasn't taking his helmet off, which kind of confirmed that. There you go. Now, you know what? Let's talk a little bit about your, your books here. For anyone who has not seen your book, get it? 
get it if they have not seen your book, Seen Unseen Disneyland, and more Seen Unseen Disneyland. <laughs> Tell us a little bit about the, your book, both of them. So my books are about the details that are in the parks that the Imagineers have put in there to make it Disney. It's all those details that make things Disney as opposed to just any other theme park. Specific focus of my book is on those details that you maybe don't notice or maybe you do notice them, but you don't know the backstory or history to them. And my books go through and point out, all, not all, <laughs> obviously not all, but several of those little details and things like, you know, the trash cans that are themed to look like they belong in an area or the signs to the bathrooms look like they belong in the area. They don't show you all of them. They leave a lot so you can go out and find your own, but they whet your appetite so you can go out and find these things on your own. And what was the one thing that was the catalyst for you to start these books? So the catalyst was the trash cans. I saw them one day. A lady was throwing a tr some trash in one. And I actually, you know, you see those things every day. You, know, you don't really notice them. And for some reason, I just noticed that day it was themed to look like it belonged in Frontierland. And it's actually the first picture in my first book. Um, it's framed all wrong, but I felt it was important because that's what started the adventure. That's what started this journey. Now, every time you run Skywalking to Neverland, I ask you the same question. When's the more and even more Seen Unseen Disneyland coming out? So I'm actually just starting preliminary work on Disney California Adventure. Um, I've been going back through and compiling my pictures, starting to do some research. Um, it's at least a year away. I would suspect it will probably be done by the next D23, which occur every two years. But right now, it's at least a year away. It's funny that you're writing this because I'm starting my own, my own book called Things You Didn't Know That Were There at California Adventure. It'll come out in about 11 and a half months. Perfect. Perfect. <laughs> then we can uh, maybe share a booth next time. <laughs> Always a good sport, Russell. All right. Well, thank you very much for talking with us. Thank you for having me on again. Now, if you haven't checked out Russ's books yet, go on over to sudbooks.com, that's S-U-D books.com, and then follow him on Twitter at Seen Unseen D. Russ is the man. Loved hanging out with him. All right, with that, that will wrap up episode 178 of Skywalking Through Neverland. We want to thank our good friend Tom Hodges, our other good friend and author of Seen Unseen Disneyland and more Seen Unseen Disneyland, Russ Flores, and our big giant family of Skywalkers out there who listen to us week in and week out. That's right. And here, a little reminder on our YouTube channel. If you are watching this on YouTube right now, please give this video a like and a subscribe. We are over 800 subscribers right now, and I really want to get that to 1,000. So whatever you can, uh, share our YouTube channel with people, and we really appreciate those of you who have already subscribed. And once again, when we go to these events, we will be posting live YouTube videos like we did at the D23 Expo, and we'll also make sure to take video of things from press conferences and everything we attend and post that on our YouTube channel, which is youtube.com slash skywalking through Neverland. All right, Skywalkers, if you want to hear some other fantastic podcasts, then head on over to retrozap.com where you can hear some great shows like Brews and Blasters, the Deuce Cast Movie Show, Starship Sabres and Scoundrels, which we just appeared on today. Yeah. We recorded with Dennis and Darth Taxis all about D23 and our thoughts about the upcoming Star Wars projects. And they're going to post that on August the 1st. Yes. So make sure to tune in to RetroZap.com to get notifications for all of our shows. And also, Kanata's Castle is a podcast on that network. And also, Techno Retro Dads and Talking Apes TV, which will be posted tomorrow. <gasps> yeah, well as you're hearing this, last Monday. Wow. This will be our season wrap-up of the animated Return to the Planet of the Apes TV series and our review on War for the Planet of the Apes. And at that point, we're going to go on a little hiatus because at this point, we've covered all Planet of the Apes on TV. Oh. But there's some more vintage ape stuff coming up in the near future, as I'm sure more film, so we'll be covering that as well. So for right now, we're going on a little hiatus until all that surfaces. Apes together strong. <laughs> and one more thing I want to bring up, Chickafant just posted on YouTube or Facebook, or whatever which one that is, hashtag Halloween shirt. 
Oh. So with that, Sarah's got some work to do. I do. Once this crazy week is over, I think I'll finally have some time to do some Halloween shirt designs. I've done some sketching, but nothing is grabbing me yet. And if you Skywalkers have any ideas and concepts about Halloween shirts, well, go ahead and share them on social media. Yes, where you can find us. We are at Skywalking Pod on Twitter and Instagram. And we have our Facebook group, Skywalking Through Neverland, as well as our Facebook page. And you can always email us if you have a lot to say. Our email is share at skywalkingthroughneverland.com. Now, stay tuned for bits of conversations, bloopers, and outtakes right after the end credits here. And then, always remember... Neverland on Alderaan! Some imagination, huh? (laughs) To our Skywalkers and Tweetwalkers, thanks for listening. Skywalking Through Neverland is created and produced by Richard and Sarah Woloski. Original music by Rob Dellinger. Creative consultant, Mark Ogushowitz. Technical advisor, Peter Heitman. Facebook administrators, Donald Wicks, Joey Pittman, and Norma Heitman. Skywalking Through Neverland is intended for entertainment and information purposes only. Any sounds, music, and clips played during this podcast are the property of their copyright holders. All original content is property of Skywalking Through Neverland, all rights reserved. Sorry, had to be said. Say author of. Yeah. Oh, good. All right. So, uh, just say a couple words. Right now. Testing, testing words, saying words, 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 words. All right. Cool. All right. Well, thank you, Cole Horton. Now, before we wrote. So, all right, Sarah. Enough wedding talk. Let's move now on to episode. All right, Sarah. Now let's move on. And if you guys have any ideas for Halloween shirts, well, reach us. Well, reach there. Or if, and if you Skywalkers have any con, bleh. and we have our Facebook group, of course, in Sky. Bleh. <laughs> Me too. And you can always email us if you have a lot to date. Oh my gosh, that was better. Okay, yes, Chica Fent wants a new shirt. I know. Yeah. Me too. I know. They didn't talk about Black Panther. Oh. They didn't talk about Thor. No, not a not a mention of Ragnarok. They didn't talk about they didn't they didn't talk about uh, Captain Marvel, which they could have easily mentioned. Yes, that was the big omission. Like they didn't talk about those three movies. And yeah, I mean, and and there's two Marvel movies before Infinity War. Oh, really? Ragnarok comes. Ragnarok and Black Panther come out before Infinity War. Black Panther comes out in February. Okay. Wow, that's funny because I guess it just. I mean, maybe we, maybe it's because the trailers have already been released. We already oh. know they're coming, mm-hmm. but I mean, and they had to bring out like forty-seven actors on stage. <laughs> yes, but, which was awesome. <laughs> and but it's it's one of those things where you're like, they did bring out Thor and Black Panther. Yes, they did, <laughs> and they did say when he came out, Black Panther is coming out in February. Yeah. Right. And like, get ready for that, and I think he even said something about Thor when he came out. But so Infinity Gauntlet. Um, I know there's room for five or seven stones. There, are, okay. This is this how it goes. There's there is one, two, three, four. There's I, there's six. There's six infinity stones. Six. Okay. And then what does the infinity gauntlet do? It collects the stones and I mean it's, you're, it, it it harnesses all the power of the stones oh. into one. In, oh, into wow. one powerful glove. Okay. Put all the infinity stones as horcruxes. Oh. Yeah, okay. And okay. once they're all yeah. together, all right, Potter nerds. To, to simplify it for the Potter nerds, are all Horcruxes. Okay. But well, well, each gem represents something. Like you have right, the mind, mind stone, stone and the time, uh, the time gem, and like right. and things like that. Like, I, I honestly, anyone who doesn't really know about it, Wikipedia, Wikipedia, the Infinity Gauntlet, and it'll tell you everything about it. You really, really want to know. Okay. So, and there are two. One is in is in um, Odin's trophy room. And the other one was, I don't know where the other one was. Thanos had access to it. That's all I know. Because at the end of Age of Ultron, he's got one on. He he has one. I was disappointed in Guardians of the Galaxy. We never heard a peep from Thanos. Yeah. I thought he he was going to be the big baddie in that. I I figured that's because um, 
Oh, they're they're, they're saving him for Infinity they're saving, War. They're, but I feel like we're gonna. I think we'll see him in, in Ragnarok at some point, or Black Panther. Like in one of those end credits, or I, I feel like uh, Ragnarok, he could actually show up in film, maybe at the end of the film, because of what ha where we find Thor at the beginning of Infinity War. <laughs>